Hello, it's Mark here for GAK, and I'm here with Rob from Akai, and we are looking at the Force. Yes. Because uh, last time we had Matt here. Yep, Matt was in. And he was doing an overview, like mm -hmm. a little bit of a demo. Yep. And what we're focusing on today are some crazy cool updates, right? Basically, yeah. So last time Matt was in, he did the general overview and did a little bit of stuff on Splice, which is one of the updates yeah, as yeah. it was released. Um, but that was quite a long time ago now, maybe about a year or so. Yeah, it was a quite so a while. Lots of things have changed, there's lots of things to go over. Um, and just thought it'd be good to come down and show you what is new, really. Cool, so what, what is new? Well, what we'll do, we'll talk about um, what is actually new and then we'll go into it bit by bit. Okay. So the first thing that happened straight away after the initial release was 3.0.3 and what that did was bring in automation into Force, as long as some other bits and pieces, but mm -hmm. the main feature on there was automation and Ableton Live export. So what people could do was automate their plugins, automate their processing within Force, Mm -hmm. And MPC, obviously they're very similar. And you can also export it as a ALS file out of that into your Ableton session. Cool. So there's all that to look into. And after that, there was 3.0.4, which was the Ableton Live integration, which was huge for a lot of people. Um, we'll show you that and how you set it up as well. Um, but there's a few different things in between we'll go into, but that's the general overview of it. Yeah, so lots okay. of change in, in a year or so. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to pretend to know exactly what sure. you're talking about. Yeah. Um, but that sounds great. That sounds cool. cool. All right. Yeah. Fine. So let's start with the, the first thing we talked about, which is the step sequencing with automation and the grid automation. Yeah, yeah. So let's look at this project here. We've got a few different sections, but the first thing you want to do is look at maybe this synth line here, which we can then automate. So right. if we put uh, effect on there, because it's got one of the built-in synths on there as well, I can actually automate each parameter inside of that, which is pretty interesting. So if we just play it first, have a listen to it. It's pretty basic. It'll sound pretty good with the arrangement. So if I just say, right, the drums and that. Some kick drum on there. Yep. A bit more going on. But if we go to the clip view, you can see the MIDI information. Yep. And then if I say, right, let's automate the cutoff on there, we can just go to here. Beforehand, you could just look at the velocities and change the velocities. But now if you select that, you can go add new and then add in a different parameter or automation. You can see here I've got all my MIDI changes. So if you're using external MIDI stuff, you can actually use the automation features on there, particularly That's CV cool. as well. I mean, are you familiar with CV stuff at all? No, no, no. Because you've got obviously the CV ports on here, so you can automate the values going to the CV devices, which is pretty useful. If I go to the plugin tube synth that we're using, I can then find any of these parameters and then map them. So let's go for the low pass filter and then I can use the pen tool. And if you want to draw in on that little box, that will follow your this automation. Here. Yes, it, yeah. There we go. Let's make it extreme. There we go. And then if we just say, right, let's stop um, all these clips and play it by itself. completely cuts it off. So right, I see, just yeah, go yeah. a little bit more like that. Yeah, yeah I literally just, just wiped out the Killed stuff. it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 you can stack it as well. So now we've done the cutoff, let's maybe say, right, add a new, let's go to plug in, and then maybe play with some of the effects on there. So there's gonna be some reverb, let's play with the mix. Let's try and find where that's hidden. And so, there and we go, R, reverb. Yeah. R for reverb, yeah, oh. reverb mix. They put it alphabetically as there well, we which is what you want. <laughs> Let's make that really drastic. And this one. So you can see there's a bit more tail. So yeah, you kind yeah. of drag it through. Okay. And then you can start combining that with other sounds. And this works on audio clips and MIDI clips. Cool. So it's all across the board. This is giving you more option, making it more versatile. Yeah, absolutely. Making it easy to use. Like making it easy, easier for the user. Yeah, exactly, and I think that's the sort of thing when people first saw Force, they're like, oh, there's some things it can't do, but because it's hardware, we can update it, yeah. and it kind of progresses as you go. Yeah. So we looked at the sort of the grid side of things where you can actually draw it in by hands, but if you want to do it by step, so we know we talked about the CV side of things, yeah. that's a really useful feature, you can do it inside of the step view as well. So if you just go to your menu, and then you jump into step sequencer, you can actually find your parameters, you can see oh, here, that's cool you can do it by hand. So if I said we had the... Is that an update? This is included in, in that same update. Right. So what I can do is then draw it in again, just by like that. And then you can even use these 
encoders to do step by step. To alter it, yeah. Exactly. So really useful. We even got presets in here as well. So if you know you just want to do a rise, you can just load that in and it loads onto the channel. So really nice and easy. Mm -hmm. So that's the first bit. Um, on the same update, you got the Ableton Live Export feature. Pretty self-explanatory, just means that you can then export your project into Ableton Live seamlessly. Right. Really quick, just go menu to the folder icon and then you've got ALS, ALS export, which means you can just bounce it as audio or MIDI, bypass the effects, or include the effects, set the bit depth. Really simple, but for the Ableton users out there, really, really useful because you can just take it from here, jump into Ableton. So was it limited before, was it? In terms of what you um, yeah, to a point, you couldn't be doing it as quickly. Right. To get it into there, you'd have to just take the yeah. files and then run it into, yeah. um, into Ableton from there. So that is the Ableton export side of things. Cool. So you said that you obviously don't use Ableton. That's not a huge problem for this because if you hold down the save button, you'll see all your possible save um, options there. So you've just got the project, you can start a new project, you can do the track, you can save the clip as audio or it's just MIDI, but you've got all clips here next to it. So that means that I can then export it in stems or in a packaged stem folder right. as opposed to the Ableton live set. So if you're not an Ableton user, you can still have them all in different channels. So which is really I use Logic, useful. you could smash it over to Logic. Yeah, exactly. Same audio and MIDI, and you can do the pattern, and you just bounce it out um, nice. as it is. Really, really simple. I like that. A company that, that are kind of not restricting you to just sticking with their products. Yeah, I think I mean? it's important. I think I know that we've been renowned for working with Ableton, um, but this doesn't mean we can't work with other people as well yeah, in yeah. regards to how we share projects. And if you're working on this as a standalone product, you want to do as much as you can in the box, but you obviously understand that some people like to master on the computer and yeah. add their own effects. And, and that's only that. going to benefit you in the long term, is more people buying this if they have the Hopefully, versatility. Yeah, to, yeah. yeah. exactly. And that, that's, that's one thing to look at. So that's great. Exporting has been really, really improved. Um, there was a few tweaks and stuff throughout that update, including the uh, folders we talked about during the effects, um, and then having the other thing which on here, which is with MIDI control. With the MIDI control on the back with the USB, it means you can plug in any controller and use that with the sounds inside of Force. Right. What is great with this update is if I press Shift and Notes, you can see I've got my note configuration, which was there before, but at the bottom you've got this MIDI input, which means that I can actually scale the incoming MIDI notes. Okay. So that means that I could be the worst keyboard player in the world, but have a controller in Force, set the scale up, and then that will put me in scale which is quite a cool feature to have yeah, yeah. Uh, for, for live as well. So if you've got a project on here and you say, right, I want to play this on stage, you aren't worrying too much about your theory. You just know that, right, I've got these notes here and they're going to be in this sequence. That's easier than knowing that there could be bum notes. You can kind of push that away. So you can turn that off, but it's a nice feature to have in there um, for people like that or for people who are really good at theory, just want to shut their brains off and yeah, just yeah, kind of get the ideas in. Of course. So that was the first update in a nutshell, really. There was other things which got on there, but those are the real headliners. Yep. The next update, which came out about sort of six months ago, was the 3.0.4. So this was the next step. So the last one we made you, or allowed you to have the Ableton integration with your computer, so sharing projects. Yep. Now you can actually control it wirelessly, which is a huge deal. And this, again, applies to the MPC range. And um, the best way to think about Force is it's like a cousin to the MPC because there's lots of features that remain the same, but the workflow is a little bit different. Okay. So with that saying, that being said, with, um, with the wireless control, what I can really allow you to do is, for one example, if I'm on stage and I'm using Force as my controller, I can have my laptop set back with the sound engineer. That will have all of my clips on there. So if I've got large backing track files, lighting cues, click tracks, that can all be set up to the desk remotely. Right. So that basically means that that top's tethered to the, the desk. Yep. It's safe, not going to get any beer on it. It's completely cool there. And then I can actually jump into live control mode and trigger them remotely using force. That's cool. That is a cool feature. That is cool. So for someone like yourself, you do more live band stuff, I yeah, guess, yeah. than this. Yeah, yeah. This could work on stage as your sound module then. Okay. So what I do is put all my sounds into here that I want to play live, have a MIDI controller over here, play it as if it was my keyboard. Equally, I'll have drum sounds on here or little samples that you want to play in real time. Right. Um, the setup is based on a uh, network. So you can have your phone, so you can use your phone's hotspot, which is really simple to do. I've used that tons and it's been really secure. You can use a ad hoc network. So if you put a router into your laptop, 
via an adapter basically mm -hmm. you can create a network that this will run from and the last one is obviously direct to a broadband uh, router yeah, yeah, yeah. like that personally I think this best way of doing it is via your phone or the I should not to the broadband through your Wi-Fi yeah. um, and that that's okay but I find that you have in a club situation or a performance situation they don't tend to have great Wi-Fi there, no, so generating your own is probably the best um, best way through. Or your phone, I've had no issues with either. Yeah, um, this the is set a good, good 3G connection. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or 5G. 5G. Is it 5G now? I don't know. I've heard bad things about 5G. Mm. Let's not go down that way. <laughs> 4G. 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 <laughs> and and what you can do with that is you have a bit of software on your laptop, PC and Mac, and that software basically will read all the information coming from Force and then encode it onto the, to the Ableton session. It's worth noting that you have to have Ableton 10 and above okay. to make this work. It's basically allowing you to have the scripts installed on the program so it reads it. Yeah. Um, and once you've installed the software on the laptop and you've got Ableton up to date, just make sure the firmware is up to, up to date on here and you'll get this icon here, which is Live Control. So when it's linked up, you'll be able to see your entire project. That's cool. So really, really useful. I think the concept takes a little bit of explaining. Hopefully I've done it justice there to make it a bit clearer. Yeah, I got my head around um, it. It's another addition to, to the world of force because if you think you're working completely standalone and then you've got the Ableton over there, you've got two worlds that will work really nicely together. Um, so you're not excluding certain things. Some of the great features inside the live control include level control, uh, clips, fundamentally you can launch your clips wirelessly like I said, and you can do device control as well. So say you had uh, effects on a channel, I can uh, use these encoders to, to control them wirelessly. If I've mm -hmm. got parameters on a synth, I can do that wirelessly as well. So lots and lots of combinations. So what I think might be useful is if we set this up, we can show you how that looks in yeah, the yeah. world. Yeah, yeah. Cool, so now I've got my laptop, I've got the software all set up, I'll show you quickly on here, which is this bit of software here. Once you're on the same network, your um, force or MPC will jump up here with an IP address. Just click on it and you're good to go. And you go to preferences inside of live and you just make sure that you've got these scripts selected at the top, which is your force uh, MPC script with the inputs and outputs at the door. And then you just turn on these settings down there and you'll see this little red box come up, which is your control box. Yeah. And you're good to go. Which so is the same. As exactly. Always. So we've just jumped into live control you can see that I've got all the same clips. Cool. So if you press any of these, that will trigger this straight off. If I press one of these. Any of these buttons, yeah. And there's some drums. That's cool, and obviously it's... That's it, and you can see it's reactive on there. And if you go to this pane here, you've got the levels. So if you move these up and down, you'll be able to see that on the screen as well. Oh yeah. Messing with your mix. Yeah, wait. There you go, it's like roughly there. But yeah. So you can do that, you can do the sends and returns on there. If I've got effects, I've got my main um, level control button, so solo, arm, that sort of stuff. So you can actually record directly using this. And the last thing is device control. So you can see here I've got a few different effects on things. On the master chain, I've got an effects rack with these macros on it. And you can see that there's some on there. Alternatively, on the melodic group, which is just here, you can see I've got all these effects. So if I go and control the low pass, down it goes. Okay. So if I go back to here and we say, right, we want to solo that melodic section, go back, and see how responsive it is. Yeah, there's no lag at all. No. You just need a good Wi-Fi connection. It doesn't have to be great either. I mean, it's, it, there's it's no all it's doing is really sending it a, a, yeah, a pulse to keep it in there's time. No lag. So let's bring these down. Let's get the sound back up. It's really, really simple. And obviously, with these down here, these encoders, if I press and hold the knobs button, the knobs button, you can actually do it with that as well. If you feel feel the knobs, Mark, you can see how responsive they are. Yeah, they've got that really nice, um, just that luxury feeling. Luxury knobs, that's what they're, that's what it's we're really going for. It's really smooth and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm into it. Yeah, you're into it. Yeah. And that will work with I just love that you've buttons. got a, a button that's called knobs. Yeah, it has to be there. It has to I be there. That's funny, ironic. <laughs> 
So now we've got that playing in time. Because it's on Ableton Link as well, which has obviously been around for a while, I can jump into my matrix in Force and play things in tandem. So you've got the two worlds there together. Nice. Which make things really simple if you want to jump back and forth. Yeah, it, it, with all this, it's just, it's just so much, it just gives you so much control. Exactly, yeah. Uh, you could just, you know, endless options. Yeah, and that's the thing. And I think that people uh, will probably start to understand this a little bit more now. Um, when it first came out, Force was like, what is it? Like, yeah. It does so many things, there's so many pads, so many colors. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it does a bit of everything, to be perfectly honest. It has all of those features for uh, producers. Uh, DJs have this element in here, because you've got the crossfaders, so you can play songs back in parts, remix on the fly. Even things like loopers, you've got a built-in looper, so a guitar like yourself can say, right, I want to record eight bar loop, and then once I've found that, I can drag that straight in. So there's so much going on inside of it. It's good to do videos like this, where we just do the updates. Mm. It doesn't have to be heavy, it just shows people what's new, uh, and then, as things go forward, there'll be new stuff and we'll do more videos and stuff. And that's a great thing, you can continually update it and make it better. That's it, that's it with standalone stuff. With oh. controllers, you're kind of limited to the software. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously the software tends to be pretty good, but you're stuck within that realm. Yeah, yeah. With standalone, we can pretty much do what we like, um, as and when the updates come through. Cool. Yeah, so I mean, that was it. It's again, there's just a real quick rundown of the updates. Um, and that's it, yeah. Sweet, thanks for coming cool. in. No worries. Um, We'd love to know what you think. Leave comments below. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, hit the little thumb thing. And if you want to see more videos like that, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Thanks for coming in, Rob. We will, um, we're doing some more videos today. Yep. We're going to look at the MPC-1. Mm-hmm. That's um, going to be fun. Yeah, we're going to have a little jam with that. Yeah. Um, thanks for watching. See you soon. Pleasure.